Well done, guys. I didn't even have to say my name and all you guys read it on the board. I'm really impressed. Can I say thank you all for coming along to today's show? I'll do my very best to entertain you as best I can. Uh, thank you very much for the parents coming in especially. Very much appreciated. This is by far my biggest audience. And it's always nice to have a really big audience to be able to set fire to. It's always great. So I really, really appreciate this. This is great. And, and I also want to say, by the way, you volunteered for this. So uh, you, there are no complaints. Um, okay, so first of all, I need to do a couple of thank yous to the people who've helped me organize this. I got asked by uh, Mr. Dan Meadows. Just in case now you've said that. Okay, thanks, miss. <laughs> She's a little bit worried. We've only had one practice of this and she had to put me out twice. <laughs> um, yeah, just have to say thank you to Dan Meadows for helping organize this. Right. She's well prepped, she knows what she's doing. Uh, also, a big thank you to my technician, uh, Imapal. This would not have been possible without him. He has been absolutely amazing for me over the last two weeks. And I've driven him absolutely start raving crazy. And I've been asking for this and this and this, and he's been absolutely good. So, okay, let's get on with this show. So, when Mr. Meadows came up to me and asked me to do uh, a science show, I asked him what topic he'd like me to do it on. And he said, well, what topics do you have? And I said, well, I can set fire to stuff. And he went, oh, that sounds great. So I, I've heard, uh, by me, that you guys have been doing rockets. Is this correct? Yeah. Yeah, have you all enjoyed it? Yeah. I, even, I think I even saw some of you guys on the AstroTurf setting off some, uh, some pump rockets. Was that right? Yeah. Oh, well, I thought they were great. I saw how high they went, and I'm going to have to work really hard today to try and beat you guys. That's my task. Um, okay, so today's, uh, today's presentation is all about fire. And what I'm going to try and do today is try and hopefully give you a little tiny education on what fire is and how chemistry has made it better. That's what my job is. I'm a chemistry teacher. and. Do you like this? <laughs> okay, alright. Causing trouble already. So, okay, so now my title is It Isn't Rocket Science. I thought that was fantastic, and I didn't come up with that. I spent two days just sitting on the couch trying to think of a good name for this. And uh, my lovely fiance came up with this title, and I just thought it was brilliant. And I'll show you some of my ideas. So I thought this was a great one. Any uh, adults in the audience might recognise the uh, song reference. Oh, that was good. Firestarter. Uh, however, my, my beautiful assistant then immediately said to me, I think that's a really bad idea. Let's not call this Firestarters. Let's not do this. You don't want to create any of those. And I, I, I agreed with it. So I went on to this one. Oh. Oh, no. Hang on. It's like, nope. <laughs> nope. One more. <laughs> there we go. Any, any, any uh, primary kids uh, recognise the book? Hands up. <laughs> Got a couple, I like it. So I thought catching fire. But then of course, when I then put this picture up, my beautiful assistant said, I think that's also a really bad idea. Can we try not to do that? And I was like, really? I thought that might be fun. But it did lead me onto safety. So the first thing I need to mention is, please, 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 do not try to recreate any of the demonstrations that I do in front of you uh, this morning. All these practicals are well rehearsed. I am a trained professional. I have been doing this for over a decade. And, and, and I have singed off my eyebrows, taken every hair off my arm, and I really don't want to have any phone calls telling me that somebody has lost their hair due to trying to recreate any of these. So please don't. <coughs> safety implications considered. I've considered everything is all completely safe. And the last thing is, um, I would also say, if anything does happen, I have to say this one. In the very likely event of a fire, sorry, unlikely event of a fire, then we will be exiting via the escape exits to your sides. I mean, there are some here, some here some just off to your sides. Okay. 
So, what I thought I'd do is I thought I'd give you a bit of a history lesson, just brief. So, fire's been around for hundreds of thousands of years, and it, it has been used by us, Homo sapiens, as people, we've been using this um, to cook. And actually, cooking is the very first example of chemistry. Because when we discovered fire, now fire probably wasn't really discovered so much as observed. When lightning strikes, it often creates fires, and we will have just simply um, either taken it from fires that were already created, but then we learned how to be able to create it ourselves. Now this fire was used then to cook things. And though that cooking things meant that we had access to proteins, amino acids that we didn't have before, which meant that our brains could get bigger. And we created an external stomach, which is called the frying pan. And that means that we can get more energy, more nutrients, and therefore become smarter. Now, of course, today, we use fire for all kinds of nice things. So we like it for... Oh, the batteries. Oh, try again, one more time. This thing's way more sensitive than I thought it So we have wool. I think everybody likes that nice picture. I can't imagine it happens an awful lot in Malaysia. In the UK, I'd always sit in my fire and it was always a lovely thing. We use it for light. So candles, of course, everyone's seen the 1900 films where they all have candles all around their house. I'm going to say a safety hazard right there. And it's awful because whenever I sit watching a film with my fiance and one of those appears, I always go, have you seen the safety hazards going on? She absolutely hates it. It's awful. <laughs> the other thing, of course, is you do it just for fun. Fire is always fun. It's nice to be able to see it. We can create all kinds of different colours. And I can do all kinds of fancy sparkles. And uh, just to let you know that that will be for another show. So I will do that at a later date. The other one, of course, is we use it to travel. And we use it to go to space. And this is where it comes in, isn't it? So I thought, first of all, we do a very straightforward demonstration, simply looking at our, kind of our four features. So we've got Oh, that's fancy. You've all disappeared from me. That's excellent. Well, I like that. It makes me feel more comfortable. Let's go with this. Can you turn the lights down, sir, for me as well? So we've got, we've got a gas stove here which is used for camping. It's camping gas. Okay, so this one's used for cooking. It's, we, we want it for the heat. We've got our very classical candle which is there for, for the light. We don't use candles for heat. We use them for light. But of course, we always also want to have a look at the other one. I'm going to come to travel in a minute, but fuck. So, cotton wool. Cotton wool is a lovely material. It's nice and fibrous. It's got a big surface area and burns rather nicely. I've also brought a ping pong ball with me as well. This often surprises people that ping pong balls burn rather well. for all kinds of things. Now, of course, the one that I really need to now focus on is I need to explain to you A, what it is, and how it's now being used for rockets. Let's see if I can make this work. Oh, I might get out of the way. So, one of the questions I get in year seven, which is very common, by the way, you can see the lovely smoke from the ping pong ball, and it's burning rather nicely. The cotton wool finished a long time ago, so it's a great example of surface area. Looking at how if you have lots of fibres, lots of open air access, then you're going to burn much more quickly. Whereas the ping pong ball doesn't have it. Now don't worry, it's completely non-toxic, it's absolutely safe. So, one of the questions I get from my year seven is, what is fire? So, this is a really interesting question for me. And the first thing I'll do for them is I'll get all my year sevens at this stage get all of my year sevens to uh, stand against the wall and line up. Now, as I said, these do not replicate any of these experiments that I'll do today. Well, sir, can you turn the lights down again? Keep on walls finishing the winter. But the first thing I'll get them to do, and this is something you do with expert guidance. Miss, I know you just listen. I know that my fiance has never done this before, so uh, my first opportunity to burn something. 
So, you just turn the lights up a tiny bit, sir. Okay. So, this demonstration is a very straightforward one. You're making an L with your hand and your thumb. And you can pass your hand straight through the flag. Now, the year sevens find this awfully exciting. Now, of course, the problem with this is if you go too slow, then you're going to burn yourself. So you have to go with a nice pace, a nice height, make sure that you're not going to hit the bottom of this, not going You go straight through this, you put your hand right there next door, you're fine, you won't feel any heat at that point. Be close. Yeah. Just go straight through. Perfect. Oh. So, the first thing I get to explain is that fire. By the way, fire has a better name, and that name is combustion. This is the chemistry word for fire. Now, I like the word fire, so I don't use it, but I, I should, as a good chemist, use the word combustion. Combustion is a reaction. And when you take a, when you take a substance, oh, I'm too far away again. What is combustion? I thought I'd put an emoji in there, you know, 21st century presentation and all. And here's combustion, here's fire kind of summed up in a picture. Which is, if you take a substance and you burn it, you combust it, then what you'll produce is a, is a, is a mixture of gases. Now there's actually three gases and one solid in some cases. Now that solid, ooh, sir, can you just turn the lights up for me? Turn the lights up, even on the audience as well, please. Do that. Ah, oh, thank you very much. So, audience, can anyone put their hand up and just show me that you would know which one of these products is a solid? Isn't that interesting? Just to let you know, uh, primary years five and six, it's not a single parent with the hand up. Oh no, I'm sorry. There's one there. You can see him there at the back. Which one would be the solid product? What's your name, young man? Ether. Which one? Oh, it's not H2O. Try me, put your hands up. H2O, in this case, is a gas. Now, lots of people think it's a liquid. It's not in this case. Fire is way too hot for it to exist as a liquid, so it comes out as a gas. What's your name? <laughs> Say again? Yes. Zachary. Which one? It's the C. Well done. It's this one here. That is the element carbon. Now, carbon is a black solid. Now that black solid is rather interesting because we would expect then to see a black solid coming off these, but in fact we don't. What we're actually seeing is the black solid is glowing, and in fact it's what gives us the beautiful colour of fire. It gives us the light. If you have no carbon, you have no yellow. Can you turn down the lights again, sir? It's the first thing I can do to this, because I can make the yellow vanish. So now my Bunsen burner is now no longer giving me these products. I've changed the chemistry. I've altered it ever so slightly. My temperature goes up. I'm now running at about 900 degrees Celsius instead of 450 for the yellow. And I'm now no longer producing this guy. The carbon now vanishes because the carbon is what glows yellow. It's what gives us our light. I'm now producing just these two. Carbon monoxide vanishes, carbon vanishes, and I just end up with these two. Perfect combustion, perfect fire. That is perfect fire. This is very imperfect fire. This is not great combustion. It's not, I'm not getting as much energy out as I would like. Okay, so now that we've kind of had a look at what it is, we now look at the basics for rockets. Can you turn up the lights again, sir, for the audience as well? Thank you very much. I, I need two volunteers. Oh, can I have you in the green? Sorry, just there. No, no, yeah, you there. Yep, yeah, perfect. How about you? Can I also follow you with my back? Fantastic. So, cool. Okay, so what I needed to do is I needed somehow to demonstrate to you how a rocket works without launching a rocket. We'll launch rockets later, it's fine. Um, but I needed to show this to you and I suddenly realised I've got a great physics demonstration that I used for years when I was teaching physics at GCSE and I thought, well, this one works. So what I've got here is I've just got a piece of string. Young lady, what's your name? Samantha. Samantha. So Samantha's holding one end. What's your name? Preston. Now Preston's going to hold the other end for me. There you go, Preston. Now at the moment you can see that the string's just loose. Now I've got the straw and the straw can run on the string. 
What I'm now going to do is attach something to this. We must be like the oscillators there. I'm sure there are people who might recognize this. Let's go for that. Next. That should be absolutely perfect. Right, I need you now, guys, to just step back slowly until it goes tight. That's one. Do you want to lift up your arms a bit? That's it. Pull it tight. Are you ready, Samantha? <laughs> Thank you very much, guys. That was fantastic. We had a good. Thank you so much. So, it's a lovely demonstration, and I was really tempted to get the kids to be wearing full body armor for that one, bearing in mind the safety of it. Uh, but I thought no on that one. So. Can anyone tell me, put their hands up, why did the balloon move? Why did it move from one end of the string to the other? Seems like an odd observation. I filled the balloon up and it moved. What's your name in my Yeah? Yes. Go. Give him some house points to make sure he gets them. Give him a round of applause. That was outstanding, Dennis. Well impressed. So, as Dennis perfectly described, the balloon was full of air. And when I let go of the opening to the balloon, the air came out of it. Now, the air was being pushed off to my right. Pushed off to my right. And the balloon, therefore... Hang on a sec, I'll do it from your... There we left. Uh, and the balloon went right. Now, this is Newton's third law. Now, Newton was a physicist. He had discovered of gravity, and he said, his third law stated, if you, have a, if you have a force, then you'll have a force in the exact opposite direction that is equal and opposite. So if I push, if I push this direction with 10, that's probably into real physics, Newtons, then I'd be pushing myself back with 10 as well. So the air moving, the air coming out of the balloon pushes the balloon in the opposite direction with that force. So, now this was noticed hundreds of years ago, and they realized, and in fact it was the Chinese who discovered this. So if you, if you throw gas out of something really, really quickly, then that object is going to move in the other direction. So, chemistry was born. So, at this point, oh, I need my clicker, my clicker's over. So, Let's see if I can get this to wake up. There we go. So, okay, fire triangle. Hands up primary. Who can tell me what goes into this fire triangle? Oh, isn't that interesting? Not many people have seen it. It's interesting. Do you know what? I'm going I'm to come back to this slide at the end of the, of the uh, presentation. So, uh, what's your name, young man? Anthony. Can you tell me one of these things? Uh, oxygen. Well, if I'm doing yours, just give me one. That's perfect. Thank you, Anthony. Gain a house point. That's perfect. What's your name, young lady? Now, to give you another one, heat. Well done. And last. Oh, do you know what? You give me a correct answer there. You give me an example of this. I want a more general term. I've already asked Dennis. I've got Dennis's name though. What's your name? Finley. Finley? Uh, I think fuel. Well done. We've got three things to make fire. We have got fuel. Well done, Finley. I've got heat. Oxygen, and I've got so I've got oxygen, heat, and fuel. These are the three things I need to fire. So what I'm now going to do is I'm going to dismantle this triangle, and I'm going to show you each one of them in turn, and how chemistry has made this better. So the first one is heat. Let's just have a look at a couple of heats. So this is my first demonstration. <coughs> do you realise that? I have to put my goggles on for this. You'll never do a demonstration without me wearing protective eyewear. So. So, okay, so I want to have a look at heat. Now, there are lots of ways of generating heat. Now, the first one, there's one here which is friction. This is from physics. If everybody now just claps their hands together for me and rub them really, really quick, does everybody notice that your hands are heating up? Yes, that's excellent. So, friction generates heat. Now, the problem is this 
this friction, this, this kind of heat, this is, this is small. And to start a fire with that is really hard. Now you guys have seen these, these wooden dowels where they have two pieces of wood and they, they put them together like this. And they generally fight, it's really tough. I've tried it once in Africa and failed miserably. So it's not the best one to do that, but it's nice to see the friction. Well, there's another heat of course, and that heat can come from electricity. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some electricity through a very small wire. Now this demonstration is really for me to show you that I can start a fire without fire. I don't need it. I can get the heat from somewhere else. So I have got set up in here. I've got a small piece of a very special type of cotton wool. And I'm now going to put a very small amount of heat through this. And I'm going to ask, sir, I need to put my goggles on. There we go. Okay. Three, two, one. Lights up, sir. So you see, I started a fire there. It was neat that I burned a piece of cotton all over here. And I just burned uh, another piece here. And there's a big difference in the way it behaved. And that's because I've altered the structure of the cotton wool to be able to add in part of my fire triangle. So we saw that electricity can be used. The other one, of course, is to use, if you don't you spot your uh, fire, you can use sparks. Now, this is one of the classic demonstrations from chemistry. And I love this one, it's one of my favorites. This is a fuse. Now, fuses, of course, everyone comes across in, in fireworks. Now, as a good chemist, of course, this is very simple and easy to make. And it's one of, the, one of the great things that chemist has in their arsenal is to make fuses, because fuses allow you to do things and give you a bit of a delay. That one was instantaneous, flash! Whereas I want now to be able to give myself a little bit of time to be able to step away. So, I'm just gonna place my fuse on here. I've got to try and turn my fuse a little bit to have it so it's pointing a little bit up for me. There we go, that's perfect. What I'm now gonna do is, I'm now gonna pour on another mixture that I've made here. Now this mixture, this mixture is called flash powder. There you go. Thank you, miss. Okay. My goggles. So what I'm now going to do is I'm now going to light my fuse. Yeah. Keep watching. So what I'm doing here is I'm starting a fire again without actual flames. I'm starting it with sparks. I get a lovely mushroom towel, which is lava and nice. Look at that. Isn't that lovely? Isn't that pretty? Okay. So we've done heat. What we now need to do is we need to move on from heat. And we need to move on to my personal favourite which is fuels. <coughs> now everybody knows this word, but fuels are wonderful things. Fuels burn. Fuels combust. I can now turn a fuel, I can turn it into those, those simple gases that I had on my second slide. So let's look at some fuels. I'll, look, I'll show you a variety of fuels. Now I'll, once again, now this one I don't need my, don't need my goggles for. Probably a little bit of an overkill, I think, to light a candle. Now, of course, we've already seen a candle, but it, a candle is a beautiful piece of chemistry. And there is some absolutely wonderful descriptions in it. Because a lot of the time, people think that it's the string that's burning. When in fact, of course, it's not. If the string was the one that was burning, it would be out in minutes. But it's not, it's the wax in the candle that's burning. And when the string is heated up, it catches fire. And that fire then melts some of the solid wax. And then the solid, the, the liquid wax, then wicks. Love that word. It wicks up the string. That's why it's called a wick. 
and it wakes up it via what's called a capillary action, we learn about that in biology. And this, this wakes the liquid up into it, and it hits that hot flame, turns it into gases, and then the gases burn. This is one of the most wonderful things I do in chemistry, because when I show this, they go, it's just, it's just a candle. It's a bit dull, and I'm like, okay, make it a bit more exciting. So I then say, let's change the fuel, because what they think is it's the solid wax that's burning. But it's not the solid wax that's burning. It isn't even the liquid wax that's burning. Liquids don't burn. What burn are gases. So I need to make some gases. So I've got a different fuel. I'm going to change fuels. So this fuel is an alcohol. Okay, so this is alcohol. Now this isn't the alcohol that you drink, in matter of fact. This is an alcohol called propanol. Now, and what, another thing is that it's pure alcohol. There is no water here. Place that in the middle as best I can. Right, so I've added a little bit of fuel in here, and I'm going to then light my fuel. So, can you turn down the lights? Right then. But at that point, people go, it's not, it's not very interesting. To be fair, I think it's very similar to the candle. And I'm like, well, I can change that. I'm very careful. My first thing is, I've added now a a mesh screen, and a change has appeared. The flame doesn't seem to be moving around quite so much. I need to make sure this is very firmly on. Okay. Isn't that lovely? It's a very simple demonstration, and all that I'm doing is I put it onto a, a lazy Susan, and I'm turning. Now what's happening here is that when it turns, it's causing the air inside that tube to rotate. And the thing is, you see, air likes to move in all directions. But if you rotate it, you start restricting its motion and it then starts to travel vertically much more easily. You remove its sideways motion. So all the hot gases, all of the H2O and, and CO2 and carbon that this is making, is now being able to go straight up. What that means is because that gas is going straight up, oxygen can get in underneath and it can then burn far better than it was before. Now this has actually been used in several films over the last decade, um, where they've done a very simple version of this and then they edit out the screen, and this is to make fire tornadoes for, for films. I just think that was quite a nice thing when I discovered that. Okay, and once again, the flame goes small when I stop turning. So okay, now, propanol. See if I can blow this out, it's always trouble. So there was propanol, and I was put that by the way just in the candle hole. It's very straightforward. Now, propanol is a, is a lovely fuel. Burns very well, uh, and it also burns very yellow. This is because it contains quite a lot of carbon. It contains three carbons per molecule, in fact. So when I burn this, I produce quite a lot of that solid carbon, and those carbon particles burn yellow. So you get a nice yellow flame. What that means is you can do nice things with it. So first thing I'll do. Now don't worry, this is totally safe. I was never going to suck that up into my mouth. It wouldn't be a particularly nice liquid to have in my mouth. It would burn me. Not by heat, but a chemical burn. So I've now filled, this is called a graduated pipette. I always love that. It's been to university and come back. It's fantastic. And I've now sucked up some of the propanol in. Now what I can do is, I can write with it. Let's do a really simple one first of all. Miss, can you get my bumps to Say again. Finley. Where's Finley? Finley, are you with a single A? Are you with a double A? Sorry? Is your name spelled with a double A? No, just... just one L. This is better, Finley. 
Do you want to see your name in fire? Yes, please. I can do that for you, Finn. Let's see if we can write something. Let's see if we can do thin. Taking a bit more liquid this time. I've got to do letters. Now, miss, you're going to have to be honest. Are you ready for the cup line? Whenever you're ready. Yep, mix it up. Fading flames! Oh my god! Now, people often see this demonstration and are usually quite surprised by it because they go, Are you not going to set fire to the floor? And the floor is only mildly warm. Now, the reason for this is this. This fuel burns exceptionally quickly. What that means is it's never going to burn long enough. And the heat it's making is rising. It's not going to go downwards. The heat downwards is being transferred through the, the liquid into the, into the solid. But the gases, the hot gases, which are able to carry the heat away, they're all going up, which means it's completely safe. And it's always a very fun thing to do. The next one for propanol, and you notice I'm focusing on the same fuel. Because there's all kinds of fun demos. I've got hundreds in my arsenal. <laughs> Maybe arsenal is the wrong word for this show. Uh, but I've got, so I've just got a hundred plus bottle, and I've got some fuel. So what I'm now going to do is I'm going to put some fuel into the bottle. I'm not going to add much. Don't need much. In fact, in fact, that's too much. I don't even need this because liquids don't burn. What well, burn are gases. Now this liquid is turning into vapor. You'll notice how quickly it disappeared. We have to be really brisk with lighting it because if I'm not here, it'll just evaporate into the air. So what I now want to do is I now want to fill this bottle with gas. So I'm going to shake it, over, shake it, up, shake it up and down. I'm going to give it a bit of a turn to cover all the walls, maximize that surface area. And then I'm going to get rid of most of my fuel. I don't need it. Nearly all of it. I don't need any of it. All I need is the gases. So I've now got a bottle which some people would say it's got no fuel in it. Because I've just shaken it all over the floor. But it still does, it has to be gas in it. So what I'm now going to do is. I'll put my goggles on for this one. I'm going to be close to it. Okay. So can you turn the lights right down for me? Okay. I'm quick enough, I get a nice big flame coming out of the end of it. Did everyone hear it? Yeah. Gave a nice whoop. It's my best impression I think I've got. Yes, sir. Oh, sure, we can go bigger this. We can go bigger. Okay. So let's go a little bit larger. Now, by the way, lovely observation. The bottle's gone cloudy. That's because it. I turned the fuel into CO2 and water, and the water is turning back from a gas into a liquid and forming a cloud inside my bottle, which is rather nice. It's kind of nice. So let's go bigger. Once again, need my fuel. Don't need much. I don't want the liquid. I want the gas. The lid on it. Give it a really good shake of the whole inside of it. Okay. Get rid of that liquid, don't need all that liquid. It's a waste, waste of good fuel. Don't even need that fuel, don't need any of this. All I need is the gas. Okay, so now again, <coughs> some people would argue that they'd say if it's empty, but it isn't. I now have a mixture of the fuel and the air, and that's going to help it burn. <laughs> Sir, lights right down. Slightly bigger. And again, you've got this lovely whew. And this, 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 this. Okay. We're going bigger. Alright, let's go bigger. So 
Okay, so bigger bottle. A bit more fuel this time. A bit more fuel. A splash of fuel in there. Uh, but let's go for a bit of extra just for good measure. Now it doesn't matter, of course, because what I need is the gases. Once again, I now need to get this all on the inside, maximize that surface area, get that liquid to turn into a gas as best I can. Now, I need a volunteer for this one, because I'm not lighting this. This is way too dangerous for me. I'm going to follow you. Oh. Bit bigger, bit bigger. Okay, time to come over the way. So first thing you're going to need to do, is you're going to need one of these. Did you prefer goggles? No? Okay. Miss, can you just see, can you just make sure that fits her properly? Okay. So you twist the finger back a little okay? Okay, so, now of course, I've still got too much liquid in here. So let's see if we can get rid of my liquid. Now I've got a longer stick for this one, because I think we're going to like this one. We need to be out a bit more distance than this. But I need to get rid of my, all my excess fuel. It's still taking a while to come down. There it is. Let's get rid of my fuel. Don't need the liquid. I'm getting it everywhere. There we go. Plenty. It's not over. Okay, so we've got our bottle. Okay, so now, Miss, can you uh, light the stick for me, please? Okay, young lady. I'm going to put it right here. There you go. And all you need to do is hold the stick at the far end and bring it over to it and just put it right over the top, that's it. You ready? of the rocket because that what I just showed you there was the same mix that was used to fire the V2 rockets by Nazi Germany that was the same reaction they took an alcohol and they took oxygen and they launched rockets using this and can somebody put their hand up and tell me why the bottle didn't move why did the bottle just stay completely still there was a problem with this picture yes, Well done. It was because if you want to launch a rocket, it's got to go the other way. Now, this is a pretty big container, so let's not launch it. Let's not go vertical. Let's see if we can go side. Got an idea. Famous. Got an idea. Do you see some of this? It's gone. Can you tie a string on it, please? I can try. Okay, so I'm going to. Miss, can I just borrow you for one second? I think I might need your help. So I need to do the same experiment, but now what I need to do is I'm going to strap this to a skateboard. Let's do this sideways, see if I can make this move. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to give Miss, hopefully, if we can find it. I should have a roll of sellotape somewhere. Oh, Miss, any idea where my sellotape is? Why I couldn't, I would have probably done it in advance and taped it to it, but I really couldn't. 
But you folks need to get this really sugar. So let's get this all mixed in again. As soon as I feel that liquid hit my hand. There we go. Let's have a container. There we go. Okay, mix. Can you help me quickly take this as quick as you can? Yeah, that's it. I like it. Should we even, yeah, stick it on. Yeah, you're doing great, miss. That's fab. Just go right around, go again. Yeah, let's really take this. Yeah, yeah, one more time, one more time for good measure. That's perfect. Look at that, miss. I'll give him a round of applause. The reason why I thought it'd be best to tape it on really, really good is because, of course, if you come off the state of skateboard, I'd be flying off and perhaps cause it trouble. So, okay. So, this is trying to tie the string. Oh, I'm running, I'm missing an assistant here, folks. I think I'm going to do. Ah, oh, she's doing the balloon. Uh, uh, I've already asked Finley. Would you like to do it? You don't have to. Are you sure? Yeah? Okay. Okay. Oh, uh, Mrs. Onel's great. Right now, of course, what's your name? Malin. Now, Malin, you can't stand behind this. Can you tell me why? Absolutely. So what this means is you need to light it from the side. So I'm going to get you to stand back here for me. Great. Now it doesn't matter that I'm not shaking it anymore. The gases are now in there. They're now in there and they're mixed. So hopefully, now that it's pointing sideways, we should hopefully get some movement from this. Are you ready, Mayla? Are you ready? I turned that gas into a much hotter gas and to more gas. And that gas has got to get out. It comes out one place and it comes out the exit here. And if it pushes that way, the bottle pushes that way. Now it's a little bit disappointing, isn't it? Because it doesn't go very fast. It doesn't go very, doesn't go very far. This is because this is a very heavy rocket for how much fuel I'm using. I need to, I need to make this smaller. Isn't that funny? People think big is better, but in fact, most of the time, not entirely accurate. So, okay. Okay, so, okay, I'm going to need a, I'm going to check the time. I do need a volunteer for this. Um, I need, uh, yes, you young lady, you can come with me. Right, I also need, is Miss Zora in, 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 in the room anyway? You need to go. Oh, okay, never mind. So, uh, in that case, I need two teachers, two really, really, really brave teachers. Teachers, I'm afraid, guys. Teachers. I'm, I'm oh. oh, yes, Miss Stringer, Miss Stewart, you have just been volunteered. I'm a Vic, it's okay. Well, okay. There you go, perfect. Oh, Vic's got out of it. I like it. Right, okay, guys. So, uh, you need to come over here, please. No, you need, you're needed as well. Next one is the first real rocket I'll be showing. And, well, I don't want to cause any damage to the theatre. Don't be my cause of damage to teaching. So, the first thing you want to ask is, uh, so you're going to see Don one of these, and this, and also can you put some body armor on, please? We're going to need that. Okay, so here's my rocket. Now you'll notice, while they're doing that, you'll notice that the rocket is the same bottle that I used for my very first bush bottle. This is a tiny 100 plus bottle. So tiny. But what I've now done is I've turned it into a rocket. I've given it some nice big fins. I've given it a nice rubbery end. Yeah, so that way if I do hit a teacher, I'm not gonna kill them, just bruise them a bit. Now what these guys are gonna do is they're going to catch my bottle. Now, in order to get them, like, so I, I know I love that, that'd be great, but no. I, I, we need to make this at least a little 
bit fun. What a bed sheet. A bed sheet. So, oh yes, this young lady, she's going to be very light. So, you need to grab one end of this. Oh, that's perfect. Look at that, that looks like a pretty good net to me, folks. Now, obviously they're a long way away, and I don't know how far this thing goes. So, I think what we'll do... Guys, you can stand right here. You know what, if I'm going to injure you, let's do it properly. Let's bring him closer. Yeah. Yeah. That's perfect. <laughs> okay. equipment myself. As you can see the rocket launcher I made from small PVC pipes. I've also made I've made a button. I love a good red button. It's always really nice. Now the problem is the button is made from a torch. Now what that means is I never know whether or not it's on or not. And what I don't want to happen is for me to plug this in and it just go off. So what I'm going to now do is just check that the button is off. Oh, oh, my power's not on. That's all right. So what I'm just doing is I'm just checking this. So it's on. Now look. So what's your Hey. So when you press the button, you're going to press it. Oh. Have I done something wrong? I might have wired it by now. It's twitching. Oh, got it. It was on the wrong setting. Right, so it's now off. So, so hey, you're going to click it to just and let go. Now, of course, Haley is going to be rather close to this, so she's going to need a pair of goggles. Oh, my goodness. It's going to be natural. She's also going to need some ear defense. Because this is going to be quite loud. Now don't worry, it shouldn't be loud and it's, it won't be loud enough that you'll have to put the Haley whip. Okay, so Haley's button is off. I'm going to turn this off now. I'm going to wire this now, instead of to a voltmeter, I'm going to wire it to my launcher. There we go. Now, on the end of my launcher, it's nice that I get to reuse bits and pieces from, the, uh, from earlier in the presentation. Do you remember the gun cotton that was over here that went boom? Well, I've got a tiny bit of this wrapped around some wire. So that's going to, what's going to set this rocket off. So now I need some fuel. So let's add a bit of my proton. And then my proton off. Don't need much. I'm going to pour most of it out. Give it a good shake. Get rid of it. Right. Stretch the sheet. Okay. So, rocket. Rocket. On. Right. Now, what I, before I need to do this, I just need to make sure I'm aiming this not at a teacher. That's perfect. I think I might go a touch, tiny touch higher. Oh, 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 let's move that a little bit forward so the fin's not catching it. 
the table. Okay. Right. I think that looks pretty good. It's right in the middle of you guys. You're totally safe. Okay, Haley. Let's go turn this on and make it live. It's now live, Haley. Whenever you're ready, can you do a one, two, three, and press the button? Can you do that? You sat, you count it. So we've seen a really nice fuel when we first saw our, our first real rocket. And you just saw how quick. Now, when you saw it on the table, it went, ooh. And all of a sudden it went, bang. Now the reason why is because I've confined it. I've now taken the bottle, I've added my fuel mix, and I've put the, this tube inside it, and that blocks it. Now what that means is that the gas has nowhere to escape. So that gas is gonna then build up its pressure, and then eventually it will move whichever part of the rocket is least strong. And so it moves off that tube, pushes the tube out, and then it self moves forward and get a nice big bang that goes with it. So okay, my last fuel, before I move on to my next one, my last fuel is a fuel that I think lots of people might know and recognize. And by this in shots, I need to just say, once again to reiterate, please, please, please do not try any of these demonstrations at home. The reason being is, because it might look simple, but I have practiced this an awful lot simply to make it safe. This particular demonstration was the one that took all the hairs off my arm. So, it's one that you've gotta be a little bit careful. Now this is called my flamethrower demonstration. So, I've got butane gas. Now this can is full of a liquid, what it feels like. But when I press it, gas comes out. So all I now need to do, Miss, can you move it here for me? I'm not letting go with this. <laughs> Miss, can I borrow you again? For, oh no, it's actually, it's okay, I can do it without it. It's all right, I can do it without it. Oh no, I think I'm going to need you, Miss. I'll just put that right down there. Mr. Meadows, you're on standby. <laughs> oh no, sorry, go on, light. Oh, I've suddenly realised. Actually, no, Miss, you can do the fire extinguisher. I'm worried about my arms again. So you can go back on that, I know what I'll do. I'm the easier I did. I've got a blow Okay, so, yes. simple but as you clearly saw from the first time I did it I got a small amount of liquid that came out of the can this is because inside here is compressed gas and it becomes a liquid now when that liquid comes out it gets cold you guys will have all known this because when you use your deodorant cans at home it's cold because when a gas goes from compressed to uncompressed it gets really really cold now the great thing is there's another demo I can do I'm going to need one five to again if you spray me Ah. Okay, so this next one is actually my personal favourite. And one of the reasons why it's my favourite is because I don't know anyone else who does this. I, I, I'd like to say that I invented this myself, I don't know whether or not that's true. But I am the only person who have ever, who's ever done this demonstration or that I've seen. So, what I'm now going to do a boiling tube because when a gas goes from high to low pressure, I'll show you the gas. 
Did you see the, the tiny cloud there? It's because it gets really cold, and what I'm now going to do is, I'm now going to collect that gas. It's really cold. Sir, can you just feel how cold that is? Haley, can you feel how cold this is? So it wasn't Haley, wasn't that Haley? Hey, you know how cold it is? Really cold, isn't it? Yeah? It's really cold. This is about now minus five. It drops very, very, very rapidly. And guys, can you see what I've put into the tube? I now have a liquid. Now, because it comes out and it comes out so cold, the boiling point of butane is zero. So if you want to turn that into a liquid and keep it that way, just put it in the freezer. And that liquid will stay there quite happy. Now you can see that ice is forming on it because it's so cold that it's now taking the air, the water in the air, and turning it into ice on the test tube. Now you can see that the gas is boiling. Can everyone see the bubbles? The liquid is at room temperature and it's boiling. It's because its boiling point is only is zero and we're way above that. So what this now means is I can do something larger than that. Because now people that always thought I was a little bit mad for this, I can light the gas. So the liquid's here. Now remember what I said earlier, liquids don't burn. Gases do. So the liquid is busy boiling, turning into a gas that's coming out the end of the tube. Isn't that lovely? So it's totally safe. People always get really worried, oh my god, it's going to go in the tube! And I'm like, no it's not. There's no oxygen in the tube. If you need to burn, if you need a fire triangle, you need oxygen, but if I put my hand around the liquid, I'm going to heat it up and watch what happens, sir. So I write down. The flame gets bigger. But if I then let go, the flame then slowly shrinks back down. This is because I'm adding my heat, my body heat, to help it boil. Now the next really mad thing I'm going to do, I'm going to pour it out. Now when I pour this liquid out, can I see you ready? I think so, well I am now, I've got this in my hand. Are we ready folks? Three, two, one. In fact, what I'd like you to do is, I'm going to back right away. When I pour this out, I'm going to back right away. And Miss is going to spray the fire with the extinguisher. Now, the extinguisher is full of another gas. It's going to visit in a moment. But it's going to fill up the gun, and that gas is going to hopefully completely put out the fire. The reason why I have to step back is because the gas comes out with quite a velocity, and it's going to blow those flames a little bit. So, let's have another go. Once again, make some liquid. There's my liquid. It gets very cold. Very, very, very cold. Okay, turn down the light, sir. <coughs> Just to clarify, you want me to use this? Yes, miss, I do. I do. We ready? You ready, miss? Turn down the lights. Turn down the lights. Lights, all of them. <laughs> Three, two. You ready, miss? Yes. One. And it's out. So it's really nice. Fire extinguishers work really, really well. Give them a round of applause because that one's a bit hairy. Now. <laughs> All right. So I do know that I'm rapidly running out of time. I'm nowhere near. So. I'll be quick. I'll be really quick. Okay. So. I'm going to do one the one at the front. Okay, um, I'm running out of time. I'm trying to decide which ones to pass. It's a bit sad. So I've got, okay, it's set up here. This, this, is, this is called a wax cannon. Wax, we saw wax earlier in terms of our candles, and it's a little bit dull, but I can make it better. What I need to do is I need to make that wax from a solid to a liquid and then turn it into a gas. I need to do it really quick. So what I've got set up down here is I've got a test tube with a very small amount of wax in it. Very little, really. And you can see how much is in it. Only a few crumbs of a candle. So what I'm now going to do is, I'm now going to heat up the wax. 
have to speed up. Heat up the wax. I'm going to heat up the wax with my Bunsen burner. I'm going to melt it. That's where I need to go. I'm going to melt it. I'm going to boil it. And then I'm going to set fire to it. And I've got a nice ice bath. So, first of all, let's get this nice and hot. Although, if anybody's making the observation, if you're close enough to see, the solid, the white solid is vanishing. And it's melting. So I've now got a colourless liquid in here. Give it a shake. Now that colourless liquid is now starting to give me some bubbles. And it really, really, really hot. There we go. You can also see that inside the test tube becomes a little bit cloudy. This is because the vapour is starting to condense on the test tube. And it will return back to the liquid. But I want to get it as hot as I dare. You can see it's really boiling now. What that means is I've got an awful lot of gas there. Sir, can you turn out the lights for me, please? Thanks very much, sir. Turn it back up. It's rather a lovely demonstration, that one. Because all I did... Turn that light down. Okay. So what I did there was I heated up, I got the gas, and when I then put into the cold water, the cold water flash boiled. It boiled the test tube there was at about 400 degrees. When it went into the cold water, the cold water shocks the glass, the glass breaks, the water boils, and steam pushes the wax out the end of the tube. And that passes through the Bunsen burner flame, catches fire, and I get that nice ball of fire. It's rather a nice demo. It shows how wax can be very entertaining when you, when you work hard. Okay, so I've got... I'm going to annoyingly skip this one, because I don't want to do that as well. But I'm going to skip that. I'm just going to do these two rather quick. I thought I'd... I now need to go on to my next one. I've done fuels, and I need to talk about oxygen. And I've talked a little bit about it already. But it's nice for me to actually have some. Now, I've got oxygen in two places here. I've got two gas, two gas cylinders, and or gas jars, and these. To press my clicker if I can. So I've got two gases. Let's look at the first one. Take the lid off. And look what happens when I put this in. What happened to my flame? Yep. Second. It extinguished. It went out. That's because this jar here is full of carbon dioxide. Now carbon dioxide puts out fires. That was the uh, that was the smoke that missed the spring. I mean, so that was carbon dioxide. Let's just do that one more time. It's quite a nice demonstration. And it goes up. Now I've got a second jar. I've got a second jar here. This one contains a different gas. This gas is oxygen. This is pure oxygen gas. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the test for this gas. So I blow the spring out. Gas. So the test for oxygen gas is to relight the glowing spring. Straight up one more time. I'll just I'll take the bit off. See that? If I put it in when it's lit, you see how much brighter it gets. So it burns quicker. I've got another source of oxygen, which is this balloon. You don't need to turn the lights up, so I can do this without. It. So if I just set the oxygen trickler, I can actually use it on the spit and you can see it getting right. Almost get it right enough to light the theatre, not quite. But it's a lovely gas oxygen. Of course we need it to breathe. Turn that on down. Now, hydrogen gas is a wonderful gas. 
reason being is, of course, number one is it's the lightest of all the gases that we have. It's actually twice as light as helium. Helium has a molecular mass of four, or an atomic mass of four, and the hydrogen has a molecular mass of two. It's twice as light. So you can see that the balloon is clearly floating from having to tie it down with the wind. Now, first thing is I'm going to need to give this young man some goggles, and then he's also going to need some of these. I'm going to need some air So hydrogen gas is actually the fuel. It's the fuel they often use for rockets. The reason being is it's got a heck of a lot of energy. A huge amount. And we're now going to see that energy by getting two. The rail's going to light like this one. Now, you can see how the balloon is moving in the air. What this means is it's a bit of a nightmare for me, because I don't want it to swing towards you. So the way that you do it is you're going to stand a bit further back, right? You're going to stand right here. And when you do this, you're going to bring the stick up from this direction. You don't want to do this, and you don't want to do that. If you poke it, it'll just go that way. Yeah? You need to bring it up from the bottom corner into the middle. Is that okay? Yeah? So this is pure hydrogen gas. There will be a bang, but no, you do not need to protect your ears with this one. Only kill it. Kill it. Have you ready, Phil? Thanks. Oh. make a rocket that I could really show you guys. Because the problem is, I'm very limited in what I can do in a room. If I'm going to make a rocket, and I wanted to make it properly, I'm going to need to use fuel and oxygen mixed together, and it's going to make a heck of a racket. So I made one. Now you guys all thought I was going to say that I didn't. But I have. I've made two. So I've made two rockets, and we're going to launch it for the rocket too, but we're all going to have to use theatre and head astro -turn. Everyone, please calm your orders. I'll say, don't.